Hello, Matthews Gatos here. In this video, we're going to cover solving word problems with completing the square. But before we get into that, I want to review completing the square. So in this example, we have an A value that's negative, but it's all messed up in the order. So my very first tip to you here is to always write your terms in descending order. Just helps you keep everything a lot more organized. So negative 2x squared minus 20x plus 3. So as always, I always factor out my leading coefficient just from my x terms. So negative 2x squared divided by negative 2 is x squared. Negative 20x divided by negative 2 is positive 10x. And now I turn to my graphic organizer. So x squared goes here, and then I take 10x and divide it into two equal pieces. Once I've done that, I factor out the GCF from each row and column. I always like to check to make sure I did that right. So x times x is x squared, x times 5 is 5x, x times 5 is 5x, so I know I'm good to go. So to complete the square, I'm going to take negative 5, multiply, sorry, positive 5, multiplied by positive 5, which is 25. So to complete the square, I am going to add 25 inside my brackets, also subtract 25. Again, the reason I do that is because 25 take away 25 is 0. And we can add 0 to any question at all without changing its value. So let's focus on the perfect square trinomial right there that factors as x plus 5 times x plus 5. So I have y equals negative 2 x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now let's figure what goes on the outside of the brackets. We'll do our little loop-de-loop. -loop. So here I'm going to do negative 2 times negative 25, and that's going to go on the outside. So negative 2 times negative 25 is positive 50. So 50 plus 3 adds to 53. So my final completed square, once I factor it, is x plus 5 all squared plus 53. So I always like to check this on the graphing calculator just to see if I'm right. So in Y1, I put my original equation. In Y2, I put what I completed the square to be. And the check always happens in the table. And you can see since both of those are equal, I know I completed the square correctly. Okay, in this example, I wanted to do one that's going to involve fractions because when we get into our word problems, sometimes we're going to have fractions when we divide out our completed square number. So let's start here by factoring out the 3. So 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared plus 5x divided by 3 is 5 thirds of an x and I'll keep my minus 7 on the outside. So what I want to do is come down here and put x squared there. I'm going to take 5 over 3x, and I'm going to divide it by 2. Now, you can do that yourself, or if you want to use the calculator to help you, you can. So it's 5 over 6x and 5 over 6x. So let's factor out the greatest common factor from the row and from the column. I always like to check to make sure I did that right. So x times x is x squared. 5 over 6 times x is 5 6x x times 5 over 6, 5 over 6 x. So I know I did that correctly. To figure out what I complete the square with, I take 5 over 6 and I square it to get 25 over 36. So that is going to be what completes the square. So I will add 25 over 36 and subtract 25 over 36. So I add and subtract because 25 over 36 take away 25 over 36 is really 0. And you can add 0 to any expression without changing its value. So let's focus on the perfect square trinomial, which is right there. And I know from my graphic organizer that it factors as x plus 5 over 6 times x plus 5 over 6. So I have y equals x squared plus 5 third x plus 25 over 36. And then let's do our little loop-de-loop -loop to figure out what number goes on the outside. So here we go. Loop-de-loop. -loop. 3 
times negative 25 over 36. I want to figure out what that is on the outside. So 3 times negative 25 over 36 is negative 25 over 12. So all I have to do then on the outside is combine my like terms. So negative 7 take away 25 over 12 is negative 109 over 12. So negative 109 over 12. So my final completed square form is going to be y equals 3 times x plus 5 over 6 all squared minus 109 over 12. So I always like to check to see if I've done that correctly. And I always check on my graphing calculator by putting my original equation into y1, my completed square form into y2, and the check always happens in the table. I can see those are equal, so I know I completed the square correctly. Okay, so now that we've reviewed completing the square, let's jump into word problems. So these are the steps I want you to follow, solving word problems by completing the square. So I want you to start by defining all your variables with units. And the units are important because when I answer the question, I want to answer it with units. Then you're going to look for the max min equation and write it out. Now, if the max min equation has one variable, you're good to go on to completing the square. If the max min equation has two variables, there will be another equation relating the two variables. I call that the isolating equation because you're going to isolate for one of the variables. Once you've done that, substitute your newly isolated variable into the max min equation, and now you'll have just one variable. So once you have a max min equation with just one variable, I want you to complete the square like we've been practicing and state the vertex. Now the vertex is key to solving this question. The vertex P and Q tells you what the max or min is, that's your Y coordinate, and when the max min occurs. Once you know that, you can then answer your question again with units. So I have two questions that we're gonna try. Let's look at the first one. So in the first one, we have a student parking pass that costs $20. So they do a little survey and they know normally at $20, 150 students will purchase that pass. They find that every time they increase the price by $5, 20 fewer students will purchase the pass. So we want to know what price of parking pass will give us the maximum revenue. So the thing that we don't know is the number of times I should increase the price by $5. So X is equal to the number of $5 increases. Now, in order to find out the maximum revenue, we need to know what revenue means itself. So here's what revenue is. Revenue is the number of items you're selling times the price per item. So right now we're selling 150 parking passes and we're selling them at $20 each. So right now I know that my revenue is $3,000, but I want to make more money. So I know every time I increase my price by multiples of $5, I am going to sell multiples of 20 less tickets okay so every time I increase the price by multiples of five dollars I'm going to decrease the number of items sold which is the parking passes by multiples of 20 fewer students so my max equation is going to look like this 150 items take away 20x because I'm decreasing by multiples of 20 multiplied by my price which is twenty dollars plus an increase of multiples of five dollars so that will be my max min equation I have only one variable so I'm good to now solve it so over here I want to apply the distributive property to get a quadratic in general form and then I can complete the square so I have 150 times 20 150 times 5x negative 20 times 20 and negative 20 times negative 20 x times 5x so let's write this in descending order group our like terms 
And now that my quadratic is in general form, I'm ready to complete the square. So completing the square, I'm going to factor out my leading coefficient of negative 100. Negative 100 x squared divided by negative 100 is x squared. 350x divided by negative 100 is negative 3.5x. And I have my plus 3,000 on the side. Now, because this is a word problem, decimals are okay. If this wasn't a word problem, I would want to see it in fractions. So let's complete the square. My x squared goes here, and then I take negative 3.5, and I divide it into two equal pieces. So you can do that if you need on the calculator, or if you don't need it, you can just do it yourself. So let's factor out the GCF of each row and column. Ah, this should be a negative. Okay, so let's just check. x times x is x squared. Negative 1.75 times x is negative 1.75x. x times negative 1.75, negative 1.75x. So I know that I've done that correctly. So now I'm going to take negative 1.75 and square it. Multiply it by itself, and that will be what completes the square. So let's write that inside our brackets. So I have plus 3.0625 and subtract 3.0625. The reason I add it and subtract it is because that is just zero and you can add zero to anything without changing its value. Let's just put these up here out of the way. Okay, so let's now focus on the perfect square trinomial. So this is the perfect square trinomial, which factors as this times this. So I have negative 100 times x squared minus 3.5x plus 3.0625, close my bracket. Now I want to figure out what goes on the outside. So I'm going to do my little loop-de-loop. -loop. So negative 100 times negative 3.0625 goes on the outside. So that's going to be positive. 306.25. So on the outside, combining my like terms, I have 3306.25. So let's factor this and add. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to now answer my question. So first thing that I want to do is find out what my vertex is. So my vertex, remember horizontal lies, is 1.75 and 3306.25. So my maximum revenue is the y coordinate. That's what the max or min is. So my maximum revenue went from 3000 to 3306.25. The price of my ticket, well, x is equal to the number of $5 increases. So let's go back up here. So remember that X is equal to the number of $5 increases. So that means that we're increasing the price of the ticket 1.75 times. So the price of my ticket is going to be $20 plus five times 1.75. So that will be the price of the ticket to give a maximum revenue. So I put that into my calculator and I get that the ticket price would be $28.75 to give a maximum revenue of that amount there. Okay, let's try another question. So I want to find two numbers whose difference is 12 and whose product is a minimum. So I have two numbers. So I'm going to say x is equal to one number and y is equal to the other number. Now, I want to find two numbers whose product is a minimum. So my minimum equation is x times y equals a minimum. Now, remember your max min equation has to only have one variable. This has two. So that means there must be an isolating equation. So if we see here, it says find two numbers whose difference is 12. That's my isolating equation. So x minus y equals 12. Now it's called an isolating equation because I'm going to isolate for one of my variables. It doesn't matter which one you isolate for. So I have x equals 12 plus y. So now that I've isolated x, I'm going to use my new x value in my max min equation. So instead of x, I'm going to substitute what x is, which is 12 plus y, times y, 
and that will be my minimum equation. It only has one variable, so that's good. So let's adjust our variables now. So now y is equal to one number, and 12 plus y is equal to the other number. So now that we have our minimum equation, we're going to expand and group like terms so we can complete the square. So over here, expand 12 times y plus y times y becomes this. So on my graphic organizer, y squared goes here. I take 12y and divide it into two equal pieces. So let's factor out my greatest common factor from the rows and the columns. And just do a quick check. y times y is y squared. 6 times y is 6y. y times 6 is 6y. I know I've done that correctly. So to complete the square, 6 times 6 is 36. So that's the number that is going to complete my square. So I'm going to add 36 and also subtract 36 because 36 take away 36 is 0. So let's focus and highlight our perfect square trinomial, which is right here, which factors as y plus 6 times y plus 6. So that will be y plus 6 all squared minus 36 on the outside. So let's finish off this question now by stating the vertex. So remember horizontal lies, negative 6 and negative 36. So the y coordinate is my minimum product. The two numbers, well, this is my y value. Why? Because I have all these y's. So I know y equals to one number. So that means 6 equals one number. Oh, no, sorry, negative 6 equals one number. And the other number is 12 plus negative 6. So that means that the two numbers are negative 6 and positive 6. That would be the answer for this one there. Okay, so I want you to remember, when it comes to word problems in particular, there's three types of people in this world. Those who are good at them and those who aren't. So you guys can go ahead and do questions 7 to 8. Uh, I have detailed solutions on D2L. And then you can do your max min worksheet, and I'm working on video solutions for that as well, so you can look for that. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.